practical approaches to support good nutrition. This presentation addresses the topic of supporting young people to mind their health through practical approaches to good nutrition with a focus on the transition to secondary school time. We do not make choices just as individuals. Many factors will influence the dietary choices we make. The last 50 years have seen big shifts in how food is produced, how affordable it is, how convenient it can be, and in food marketing. As a society, we have moved to a more time-poor environment. Increasingly, we are spending more time at work, commuting, and eating on the go. Family life has changed. In the 50s, 60s, 70s, even 80s, it was commonplace to have a parent at home, usually the mother, who would look after the home, the children, the cooking, etc. While some households do have a parent at home, there are now many more distractions, including technology, extracurricular activities, etc. So what does all this mean for our young people today? For the most part, in Ireland, we are well fed, meaning that most of us have access to enough energy from our foods. However, what is increasingly obvious is that the foods being chosen are less nutrient rich. Affordable food can be high in energy, and often the problem is not a lack of energy in our diets, but a lack of nutrient density in those energy rich foods. So what should our diets look like? In Ireland, we use the food pyramid to guide our eating. The larger shelves should be where we choose most of our foods from, with less needed from the smaller shelves. You can see that fruit and vegetables comprise the largest shelf in the pyramid. Therefore, we should aim to base our meals around this food group. Next on the pyramid is the carbohydrate foods, which provide energy, vitamins and fibre. Young people need more dairy foods than adults. They need five portions a day. This is on the next shelf. Protein gets a lot of press at the moment, but most people get plenty from their food. Two portions a day is adequate for most young people. Fats and oils are needed in small amounts, but are important for our fat-soluble vitamins. Treat foods have been taken off the pyramid, as most of us don't need them. But as always, think about your own child's unique needs in this regard. Food does not have a moral value, i.e. no foods are bad. And these treat foods can be enjoyed by most people in small amounts. So we have an idea of how our teenagers should be eating. But how are teenagers getting on in Ireland today? Well, we know one in five are overweight or obese. But when we hear that statistic, please bear in mind that four in five are not overweight or obese. And again, as always, think of the young person in your life and their unique needs in this regard. With a public health focus on overweight and obesity and media saturation with this message, we need to remember that young people often try to lose weight, with girls being twice as likely as boys trying to diet. So when we think about how are our teenagers getting on in Ireland with healthy eating, we know that a third of Irish teens eat no fruit at all. We also know only one in four young people eat any fruit or vegetables. 13% never eat breakfast. And one in four young people eat sweets every day. It 
it's important to remember that not everyone experiences the same thing. Sadly, we know in Ireland, one in five people report going to school or bed hungry. We know there are health inequalities in society, with people in the lower economic categories suffering the biggest disadvantage. So as parents and carers, bearing in mind the advice we're being given around healthy eating, what can you do to support your young person as they transition to secondary school? to make the best choices they can for healthy eating. As parents and carers, you know your young person best. So always think about them as individuals. Consider, are they underweight? Are you concerned about them needing to gain weight? Or perhaps they're a healthy weight and you have no concerns around this. Are they overweight or perhaps in the obese category? And how is this affecting them and their health? Does your young person eat well with good variety, as you've seen in the food pyramid? Or is this something that you think might need a little bit of attention? Do they struggle to eat various foods? Perhaps they have sensory difficulties around eating foods or other concerns. Are they on medication that causes side effects like poor appetite, taste changes, and nausea. This may impact on how well they are able to eat at certain times of the day. How are their bowels working? If there's constipation, often this will have an impact on the foods that the young person will eat and their appetite. How active is the young person? Are they playing lots of extra sports and activities? Or do they spend a lot of their time sitting down, perhaps reading, playing computer games, and relaxing. All of these considerations are important when it guides you around what your child or young person's nutritional needs are. As your child moves into secondary school, they're making another move towards becoming more independent. Most primary school children will be used to bringing their lunch into school, but that may change now. There may be a canteen. They'll be very much influenced by what their friends are doing. They might be asking for money. There'll be vending machines. Or maybe they'll go out into shops. In shops, there'll be access to meal deals. Many meal deals, while they're good value for money, are often high in energy and low in nutrient density, like we mentioned before. If you're giving your young person money for food in shops, it might be worth having a conversation with them around the false economy of meal deals. Perhaps they can buy a sandwich and a piece of fruit for the same money as they would spend on a meal deal. As well as direct food changes, such as moving to a canteen or vending machines for food, our teenagers' diets can be influenced from a number of sources, such as friends and social media. As teenagers grow and develop, they often become more body image conscious. There are lots of fad diets and trends, and I would recommend parents and carers discourage teenagers from following these. Try to reflect on the advice in the food pyramid. If the young person in your life eats like that most of the time, you're likely to be doing quite well. When reflecting on the young person, ask yourself what's working well with their eating now. Often there will be lots of positives. If you think there's gaps in their diet, try and figure out how you can address those. 
if there are specific concerns that you have about your child's eating that you think may need professional help, please speak the same. So to summarise, we are individuals, but our diet is influenced by our lifestyles and the environment around us. We are advised to base our food choices on the food pyramid model, choosing our meals around the most nutrient dense foods. Remembering that there is no such thing as bad foods. We know in Ireland our teenagers often are not meeting those nutritional goals, but we know there are many often complex reasons for this. So as a parent or carer, you should look at the young person in your life and their individual considerations. And as they move to secondary school and exert their independence, look at ways to help support their nutrition in that changing environment. I'd like to take this opportunity to wish the very best of luck to all students starting secondary school in 2020. Thank you.